the ITC can do. No one is coming to save us in this weather. No one. They will be here I'm, because I'm falling asleep. I'm getting cold. Um, um, I had bubbles of frostbite on my wrists because my gloves shrunk from the ice and my parka shrunk. And there was this opening and I had blisters all over here. So like, this is it. I mean, but someone will come. I mean, I'm just gonna lay here, and then Ed came back, <sighs> woke me up, and said, Are "You good?" I said, "Just let's start loading dogs. Let's get the dogs." And now it's it's not as easy. You pick the dog up and put him in the sled bag. Stay, puppy. Stay. And no, they are fighting you, and all of come. They they want to get out of the sled bag. They finally we. Five dogs in, got it zipped up, and Ed said, now you got to stand on the runners. He said, but sit on the runners and crutch on the left runner because the wind will be from my back. Because if you sit low and just hang on to like both feet on one runner, um, the wind won't flip the sled all the time. I said, okay, and I sat there, and I sat there, and I was like, still ice building up again. And I, and at one point he stopped and said, okay, now you can stand up and drive the sled like normal when I move forward. And he did, and we hit a, um, a, a flat square piece of ice again. And the wind took my sled. And there was like a, a solid cut. And when he hit, the sled flipped. And my foot got tagged or caught between the brake and the drag mat and the runners. And the flat slipped and slipped with my foot being in there and I'm being flipped and flipped and the sled threw me out while we're still moving forward with the snow machine and then it, it felt like ages but it was just seconds being flip 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 and then Ed stopped with his snow machine I said you okay I said to Ed I said I think I've got a broken ankle <laughs> I said I know as a doctor he said ah I wouldn't use the words that he uses it we don't need that. I said, I'm sorry, we don't need that right now, but let's get back. Let's do this. Let's get the dogs out. It will heal. These are what I'm here for. It's for the dogs. I want to get them out. Back on the sled, we've gone to say, uh, that safe place. Him and Bridget took, by that, I'm useless by then. It's, it's swelling, it's painful, I'm cold. We got there, they took the dogs, and then Ed... Um, and I, Ed went back, Ed and Bridget, tough girl. I mean, her hands were frozen. She's got frostbite all over her face. Um, they went back. I'm useless. They put me, made me, made me cozy with my foot on a cooler. And here I am on Hawaii in the beach, looking at the sun in my face. And uh, they came back and then my body went into shock. Because I told Bridget, which I didn't knew she was an ER nurse. And I said to Bridget, are you feeling? I said, I think when I know a little bit of medical terms, my body is going into shock now. Because I feel because I'm shaking terribly now. And she said, to hell with it. Ed, get him out of here. Take him to White Mountain. This guy needs to get out of here. And uh, I'm on the snow machine with a broken ankle, one leg. I think it's the small one, the tibia or the I don't know which one is a small one. At that stage, I didn't know it, but it was broken. I could feel the bone. I don't know which one is a small one. At that stage, I didn't know it, but it was broken. I could feel the bone in pressing on my boot. I was sitting on a snow machine with doing this and... Then again, it crossed my mind. When was the last time you did something for the first time? Here I am on a snow machine, traveling at least at 55 miles an hour with a guy I don't know. And it feels like a racing team. We're just going. I could peep. Every now and then, I just peep through there. It's like, what can happen right now? Be realistic. This snow machine can throw you off. Say, All right. I thought to myself, oh, we can roll the machine. We never did. Ed took Ed and Bridget saved my life, and those two saved our dogs. All the credit to them, but we got the dogs out. When, we got to, when I got to White Mountain, everyone is fumbling around, and I said, oh, even in military, I sometimes disregard red tape. 
and just do what I have to do to save someone and to just get out there, get Bridget back, get the dogs back. That girl is tough and she is cold. Everyone which can assemble a snow machine, just go out there. And I've heard this morning that they sent a rescue team from here. They turn around because the wind flipped their 750 pound snow machines like tumbleweeds. Her husband, um, Bridget's husband, made it to her. And I felt bad leaving them. I was useless. I want Bridget, Bridget said at that point, said, I cannot focus on keeping you alive. Let's focus on the dogs. Get out of here. Well, dear heart, you, uh, it, it sounds like you got a lifetime of Iditarod experiences <laughs> in one run. Like, you know, uh, have you been able to come to terms with everything that's happened? No. I, I still miss not making the arch. But it's not important. And the dogs came back. And we got out alive. And the more time goes by, the more I think about it. I said to myself, Lieutenant, you made the right call at the right time. I'm sticking with that call. It would have been nice, but it's, it's just a piece of wood for me right now. The honor lies in taking care of my dogs, first and foremost. Yeah, yeah. It's, it will come back in the future again and sit and drink a scotch and maybe shed a tear and never made it and i tell myself to hell with this 50 miles from the end you want to tell yourself you didn't make it you did everything the trail offered to you 50 miles you saved it you saved dogs turn it back you want to tell us how you didn't make it See, you made it you made it to know i uh, i hope if you have those moments where you're hurting for not getting to the archer, I hope you go back and listen to the first 35 minutes of this interview because that's what, that's why I wanted to ask you those all those questions first. You had an immaculate run. You got everything that this trail has to offer, just not the finish line. But if it's all about the finish line, you miss everything back there. My finish, my finish line was. My dogs are safe. That is my finish, and I'm sticking to it. I, I just it, that that was the best feeling when I heard the dogs are safe. Because I was assigned to take care of these dogs. It was my job and responsibility, and I'm sticking with it. Then put it to bed. And congratulations on a great run tonight. Thank you, thank you, Greg. Here are. Thank you.